So my name is Phil Eichmiller. Phil is a senior QA engineer on the Fusion team. He's an expert at teaching Fusion, has taught numerous classes at Autodesk University, and continues to teach Inventor and Fusion to students at his local community college. Look at, look at this, this problem here. Okay, well, how to make a crosshatch pattern here? Well, are you going to machine it in? You know, I would first go to my machinist and say, how would you make a crosshatch pattern here? Because if it just needs to be cut in the metal, you might know a pretty clever machinist that has ideas about patterns and things like that. Some features like that can be added at the level of the, the cam operator, and they have different different sort of, mod, you could call them modeling tools. I mean, it does change the geometry. I don't really have a knife drawn up per se, so I'll just, I'll just make a simple shape real quick. In the post, the person has drawn a bunch of X's all across it. And so, uh, again, if you were to go for the, the machinist approach, um, then just do what you did with the pencil, but you do it with sketch objects. All right, so how many do you want? All right, there's your crisscross applesauce pattern right there. Um, if you need to, you could obviously drag some of these lines out, you know, make it a little bit bigger, put angles on it, do, you know, dimension it any which way you want. But this is the kind of thing that if you're going into manufacturing, um, you might actually just use a tool path that uses just straight lines like this. It's usually for text and stuff. So let's say that um, you really want to do this yourself using fusion and modeling. You might wind up just go ahead and doing some, doing some actual real construction here. So how about we do a plane along path, put that there, and we want to pull that out to the end, put a sketch there, and look at the sketch. So if this, this lies on top of the object, so maybe, you know, draw a little polygon, okay, tab three, there we go, all right. Uh, stand it up so give it some sort of size I don't know what size you want to give it how deep is your groove maybe just one finish the sketch and then sweep that okay no I'm not all right I'm just doing things wrong there we go so there's our little groove right so make the the groove you want to cut into the part sweep it out you could do that in both directions, and then uh, then pattern again is your friend. So pattern, you can pattern a feature, which really is just a way of patterning the faces made by that feature. Um, set it up however you want. I've seen people do this where you can actually just flip the pattern even. So if you wanted to, you could even mirror the pattern right over itself and you'll get kind of an interesting effect. I want offset plane, there we go. So put that somewhere in the middle. Go here and pattern, we'll mirror, mirror this feature. Mirror the two features, which is the first sweep and the pattern made from it. Do like so and you got your crisscross pattern, depending on how you want to set up this, this mirroring object, right? So obviously a lot more math could be done to get exactly the pattern you want out of it, but it's, it's just a small set of features. It's just good to break it down into little ingredients like this because these things are all editable, right? I can go in and decide to change the size of the groove. I could change the angle of the original sketch. There's a lot of things giving me control over the, the outcome of this pattern. So I think once you tried the workflow a few times, you'd figure out where, how it's making the pattern you want. But that's how I would do it.